Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1 and since then I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. In this video we're finally going to be stepping Tally Ho's mast. So today we're going to be stepping the mast in the boat. Now it's not the final stepping, it's just going to be going in to take some measurements uh, for the shrouds and the rig and then it's going to come out again so the riggers can work more efficiently with the mast on the ground before it goes in for good in a couple of weeks. But it's still a really significant day and really exciting to think about the mast going into the boat for the first time. So we're all set up, we've got some temporary rigging set up on the mast, uh, we've got the actual shroud set up on the mast uh, ready to be measured. The crane is uh, just driving around the corner. We're going to lift the mast in. We're going to really hope that it fits through the hole in the deck and into the mortise in the mast step. And hopefully it should be in and out in just a few hours. So I need to talk a little bit about Tally Ho's standing rig, and that is the, the wires or ropes that hold up the rig, hold up the mast, uh, and the material we've used and why we're using it. Now back in the day, standing rigs would all have been made out of hemp probably, or manila. It would have been cordage, uh, fiber, rope, uh, and then later on, uh, coming into the 1900s I think, that started being replaced with metal wire, iron or steel. Uh, later on that became galvanized steel, which was the norm for many decades, and then later still, stainless steel became the norm. Now, these days, it's really hard to get anything other than stainless steel, really. You can get some galvanized steel, but uh, not really in the quality or the sizes that are typically used uh, on sailing vessels. So Tally Ho's original rig would have been galvanized steel, uh, and it would have been spliced at either end and probably served and parceled, but being so hard to get that material now, uh, if we went with metal rigging, we probably would have had to go with stainless steel wire, which is now pretty much the norm for sailboats. Stainless steel wire doesn't really splice very well. That is, it's hard to make loops out of the wire and bring it back into itself. So you end up with a lot more hardware on the terminations of the wire uh, and to attach it to the spars. So this wouldn't have been a very traditional or very fitting uh, look for Tally Ho. And another thing about stainless steel is that it can actually be surprisingly susceptible to corrosion if it's covered up in certain ways, exposed to certain things like seawater, but not to other things such as oxygen. Um, and the way it corrodes is kind of scary because you don't really see it, it happens from the inside out, so you don't know about it until it's too late. So considering the drawbacks of trying to find galvanized steel uh, or trying to use stainless steel, uh, we decided to go with a third option, and this is a modern fiber approach. Modern exotic fibers behave like rope, uh, they can be spliced, they're very malleable, you can tie them in knots, but they're extremely strong, uh, much closer to the strength of metal. In fact, by weight, they're often a lot stronger than metal. So Dyneema, for example, which is a brand of modern synthetic fiber, uh, is 15 times stronger than steel by weight. What this means in practice is that these materials behave very traditionally. You can splice them to create loops that go around the mast or around other hardware, but they also have the advantage of being extremely light for their strength. And this is especially good with Tally Ho because of the way we rebuilt the boat. We slightly raised the center of gravity and so taking weight out of the rig really helps actually maintain the original sailing characteristics. Now, of course, as with anything, there are some downsides to using this material, but in this case, they're actually very easily mitigated. So I'm gonna let Ian explain how we're gonna do that. Good. 
Cali Hose getting a modern heat set Dyneema standing rig. And if you look at the mast over here on the sawhorses, you'll see that we've parceled and served the entire rig. And we parceled and served to protect the material underneath it. When it was galvanized iron, if that was exposed to the elements, uh, salt water per se, it would rust it out from the inside out. So wrapping it in a bunch of string, serving it, and then tarring that string prevented the elements from getting in there. With modern heat set Dyneema, we don't have to worry about the elements getting in there. And that material has two vulnerabilities, which are chafe and ultraviolet light. Having said that, it's important for everybody to understand that it is the most UV resistant rope out there and the most chafe resistant rope out there. But what we've done with Tally Ho is served it. So we've effectively erased those two vulnerabilities. Ultraviolet light's not gonna get to it. Chafe is not gonna get to it. How long is it gonna last? Uh, let Leo's grandchildren tell us. There's no stretch in this material. There's no creep in this material if you size it properly. Those are two big concerns floating around in the world about this material that it's not okay to use. And that just comes from a large misunderstanding, which I think is the third vulnerability of that material, just the misunderstanding. It has a huge benefit for wooden boats in my mind. And that is when it comes down to tuning a rig. Tune is all about overwhelming stretch in wire. I want to tune a rig so that when the wind powers up the sails, that wire doesn't stretch and the mast doesn't come out of column. Since this stuff doesn't stretch, we get a much lower static tuning load on the boat, which is kinder to the hull and the framework of the boat. And what's also really fun about this material is it allows us to play with the old handwork techniques of rigging. We don't need expensive swaging machines or dies or presses to build this rig. We can all do it with our hands with a simple eye splice, like was done back in the day with three-strand rope. So yes, we are using a modern rigging material in Tally Ho, but I feel that the whole design aspect of the rig is closer to the traditional design concept of the rig with the modern fiber. So the mast is in place and although it's only temporary this time, it's really exciting to see what the rig is going to look like, see the mast in the boat. It's the first time the boat has had a mast for decades, uh, so that's a really great feeling. Now this has been a long time coming, there's been so much work go into the mast and the other spars, a huge amount of design work from various different people, a lot of actual construction work of course from uh, Robert and Doug and their team down at the Northwest Maritime Center workshops and even a long time ago now actually getting the timber itself cut for the spars. Uh, we had a lot of spruce milled by a company called Touchwood uh, and John who runs that company very kindly got some footage of the process and now seems like a good time to show some of that footage. The very tree that made up Tally Ho's mast uh, getting milled up in Canada.
Well, the mast has gone in and come out again, uh, but we've got a lot more work to get on with. And so some of the next jobs are going to include um, getting the rest of the stem band on, some that you saw in the previous video. But Zeal is now going to be installing the top part of it, which goes above the bulb stay fitting and protects the front of the stem above the waterline. And we're also finally going to be getting the cap rails bedded down and fastened in place for good. Up until now, they've just been sitting there and they've been coming off and going on again for various things to get fitted, dry fitted, mounted, measured, and so on. But now we've actually got the hardware that we were waiting for. They can be put on the boat for good, bedded down, screwed down and plugged. And that's great because it's going to cover all the staunch on heads and we don't really want those out exposed to the weather. God, you love to see it. It's just the kind of thing that makes you believe in God, you know? Squeeze out. Need to get filled. With what? Does that that need to get filled? I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't. I. What were we even talking about? Nothing. I see nothing. Let's move on. Yes. <laughs> well, it's been a really exciting first couple of weeks outside the shed. 
Really amazing to see the mask get steps, uh, even if it had to come out again so soon. But it seems like everything's lining up pretty well there, so it should be ready to go in for good pretty soon. The stem band looks fantastic. The cap rails, I'm really pleased that they're on the boat for good now. It has, of course, been a little bit of a challenge working outside in the wind and the rain, getting dark earlier now at this time of year. Uh, but we don't want to build a shelter over the boat, at least until the mast is in for good, because it would get in the way. But we will probably be doing that in a few weeks. There is still a lot of work to do on the boat. A lot of stuff down below, a lot of interior joinery, woodwork, a lot of system stuff going on still. Uh, still a lot of hardware to design and make uh, for the deck and install and just a lot of stuff to do. So uh, it, the boat is looking more and more like a boat, um, but we're still a long way away from launching. Now we've got a couple of weeks until the final mast step and a lot of work to do before then. Uh, a lot of work on the mast itself to get it ready. We've got to fit the spreaders, uh, make a lot of hardware to attach various things to the mast and to the spreaders, as well as get a few things ready down below. For now though, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and we're able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.